So here we are, finally picking up the boat. It's been down here in Fort Lauderdale for two months since we purchased it. It's a nice little spot. We have it docked behind a, a private home. And a real nice area here. And the captain, Tim, is coming today. And he's gonna give us a little bit of instruction on using the boat. We plan to spend a day or two with him and then we're going to take it back up to Philadelphia. Now we just had to figure out how to hook it up to the boat. We've never had one of these before. We just had to figure out exactly how the bracket goes on. And then it seems pretty forward, except that it's, it is a manual thing, like the turning part is manual. And that boat's... So this is uh, on, we have to actually physically push the boat. Gently, right? That well, should be fun. Go oh. physically off to the side and then lower. It seems like it's pretty straightforward and easy. It's just, just probably going to take 20 minutes every time we do it. So, so Lynn's cleaning the seats of the tender, trying to get it ready for the trip. And it looks like we have a couple of uh, tow boats coming in to help move this other boat next to us. I'm not sure why. Whether it's to guide it out of the uh, marina and down the new river. Or if they're having some sort of an issue. I'm ready for a bridge opening here at Los Olas uh, Avenue Bridge, I guess it's called. There's quite a few boats on New River that are taken in and out by towboats like that because they're so large and the river's not really that big. So I guess that's what's happening with this boat right here. Right, right here, headed out along the river, and I think if we come out here, we went up the river, went out the inlet, 
headed north for maybe about a mile and tested our autopilot. This trap wall needs to be adjusted. It's not a. Uh, and yeah, you can see if you're looking at it close enough, you can see where we tested our our autopilot doing circles and loops out in the ocean, right next to where we're docked. Hmm. Oh. So, what was your overall feel with today? Um, it, it was good. I, I, I'm getting a little bit better and more used to handling it. But, um, and we had a couple of things go wrong that were things that could typically go wrong and they went wrong at the right time because I had somebody with me. We lost, um, one of our engines got uh, airlocked, the fuel lines got airlocked. Uh, so now I know to make sure we're testing the ray cores to make sure there's no air in them before we leave. Mm -hmm. um, that caused me to stall when I was pulling out, which could have been a catastrophe. It wasn't. Uh, and then uh, we lost the, we over, because we lost one engine, we were using the bow thruster more than we should have, and it kind of overloaded and turned itself off to protect itself, which was good but to know that that happened. It was good we had Captain Tim here <laughs> because he drove it with a yeah. bow thruster in one engine yeah. up to the gas dock, which was something different that we haven't done before. Yeah. You know, to get yep, the diesel. Pulling up to a gas dock, uh, a like barge a that comes out, and you fuel up at the barge instead of going into a marina. So that was something we've never done before. So uh, it was a lot of experiences like that. We got to set up and test the autopilot, which is working great. Yeah, uh, it's and, all done. Uh, the electrician so, came this morning to. And I did not too half-assed of a job pulling back into the slip. Didn't hit anything. Didn't so, hit anything. So. Yeah. It might, so. might have looked a little ugly, but I got it in. So, all in all, it was a good day. Yep. Time for a martini? Time for something. <laughs> so, it's our sixth day or seventh day here? Um, I think it's Saturday, right? So, we got here on a... Sunday, right? We got to Florida on a Sunday. We got here on a Monday. Okay. So, every day it's been a surprise. <laughs> and this morning we had a real shitty surprise. Mm -hmm but there's a solution to it. Well, we need to get pumped out. Yeah, our bathroom overflowed. We knew it, but lucky the marine has a pump out at every slip. That we didn't know, but now we do. And Ed's been looking through the book to figure it out. Yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna go over there and talk to them about pumping well, Because we need two more days too. Yep. Because we're getting our billages done today, cleaning up, uh, still cleaning up the oil spill. Well, bye. Found one of it. Well, it looks like maybe you, instead of suction like we use, you spread it in. Maybe. And then you clamp it on. But these seem to thread in. And then you, and then you probably. Each, each, um, it seems like each thing has its own pump out station at each bay. So this is exciting. This is the shitty work. You get the hose ready. Hopefully it doesn't squirt up all over them <laughs> because it's really full. Okay. Can you I have the three quarter inch wrench? Yes. Sweet sound of shit sucking. Yeah, you can hear it sucking. Well, we did success on that. I don't know that yet. 
Well, we hope so. <laughs> Hopefully there's nothing inside we're supposed to turn on or open. <laughs> All the thrill of learning a boat when there's no one to ask. I mean, the other boat, all we had to do is do pump this. it, but you would go in with a hose and squirt down inside the toilets and stuff, too. Yeah, to and clean it. I don't know if we're going to do that. We'll probably well, just rinse out this with a hose. We should probably check and see if there's anything happening in the floor guest head. Okay. I would take the camera. <laughs> don't take the camera? <laughs> well, <No. laughs> See, that's your poop going through right now. It's whistling. <laughs> uh, see, it's even got fart noises. All right. Tiny little things, but I don't think they're not they're worth even worrying about. It's official. Yep. It's any big bubbles, just some tiny little specks. And they might be not worth trying to get them out. Do you need a pin? Yeah, but they're not big, you know. It's like a, I think the pinhole would look worse than the little gun. It's official, we're Triton. Hmm? No longer seize the moment. Officially Triton. We learned a, a lesson that if you empty out your holding tanks but forget to close the valve when you're done, the seawater will siphon right back in and fill them right back up again. So, the second time in two days, and this time I'm not going to forget to do that. Plus, it should help with the lift of the boat, too. You gotta lift. We have the lift on the one side, so hopefully it helps well, hopefully, with that. Yeah, hopefully this helps with the list. Did you open your valves? Yeah. So we're good to go? I need to get a three quarter inch wrench to open that valve and then I'll get her going. And we'll know. So after hooking up the hoses, you need to open up the valve here. And at the end of the dock, there are a couple of uh, buttons to push to turn it on. So I'm gonna go do that. Okay, and I'm gonna have to quickly go below and open up the valves. All right, so now I'm going down into the generator room and we have here some valves and courtesy of the previous owner he marked the configuration that they go in to pump out the holding tank so I'm going to do that right now keeps in shape does it seem like it's uh, pumping out So this is the configuration. The previous owners have uh, given us all kinds of fittings depending on what type of system we have and what marina we're staying at. And it's a long hose and it's just basically going into a, a suck out right at our slip. And that's fortunate. Not all marinas have that. Sometimes you have to pull up to a, uh, a dock that's, or a slip that's specifically designed for pumping out. But this one's convenient. Fortunately for us, since we had to do it twice. This is called fisherman's. Uh huh. Is it gonna fly away? <laughs> if I'm doing it correctly. 
say line before somebody kills me for calling it rope on a boat. It's never rope on a boat. It's rope on the ground. On a boat it's a line. One, two. Take my back. Big flat surface. It wasn't too bad getting down either. We have to get up there and wax eventually, anyway. Is it all chalky? Yeah. It's not going to get chalky really as much as the other boat because it's painted as opposed to uh, gel coated. All right, cool. Wow. So I'm sitting on the bow of the boat. that was uh, failing. A lot of these things were just old pumps, things that I feel better having them replaced anyway. Um, so it's better that they went here or showed some sign of weakness here before we got out to sea. I think we've got everything together. We took the boat out for two uh, shakedown sort of cruises. And uh, one of them was kind of an issue where we lost the engine. We got some air into our Raycor filters, uh, killed one of the engines. We ended up having to run on one engine and a uh, and the valve thruster all the way to the uh, fuel dock. Got that straightened out and uh, learned how to take care of an airlock and a raycord filter. Uh, and the other um, cruise went, you know, went fairly well. Um, so we think we're ready. We hope we're ready. I believe we are. And we're gonna um, head out of here tomorrow morning. Slack tide should be around nine o'clock. So we're gonna head out of here nine o'clock tomorrow morning thereabouts. And we're gonna head up to uh, Palm Beach. There's a marina there. Um, can't think of the name of it right now, but I hear it's a good marina, and it, uh, we should arrive there. If Shellfish. We're... What's that? Shellfish. Shelf? No. Oh. Not, that's what you thought it was. That's what it's not. Um, sailfish. We're heading to Sailfish Marina up in uh, Palm Beach, and should take us maybe about four or five hours to get there. We're going to take our time. Tight as well. At least that's a plan, but we'll see how it goes.
Well, when we bought the boat, we knew it was going to be a learning experience jumping from a 40-footer up to a 58-footer, and we knew there would be a lot of information we'd have to gather, especially how to operate the boat. Um, there's a really big difference, bigger than I and uh, Lynn thought, between the two boats. Uh, our current boat, or our old boat, uh, Reprisal, it's kind of like a big car, you know, with a little bit different cooling system, but it, you know, it, it was basically like that. This is sort of an island. It has its own generation, water makers, um, there is six air conditioners on this boat, there's four bathrooms, uh, plumbing systems, it's just amazing. There's just three different electrical panels, four up here alone, and a tub. three more down there, there's a bathtub on here, there's, it just, it's just kind of nuts. Um, so there was a ton of things to learn. And I want to give a, a shout out to Captain Tim. I don't even know his last name, we just call him Captain Tim. He uh, was the captain for the previous owners of the boat. Now, unfortunately, the previous owner, the captain, uh, Lauren, passed away about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and his wife lives out in Colorado. And um, so they weren't here to show us the systems of the boat. Typically, when you buy a boat, you meet the previous owner, he shows you all the little quirks and how to turn things on and everything of that nature. However, since he passed away, we didn't have that uh, ability to ask him questions. Tim had some knowledge. He became the captain of the boat after Lauren had passed. Uh, between the time that um, Pam, the wife, uh, owned the boat and Lauren passing was about a year and a half, and Tim would come over and take care of the boat um, and keep it up to speed, do some repairs, get it back to where it needed to be to sell it. So he had some knowledge, but he had a lot of knowledge about Hatteras boats uh, in particular. And he's worked with us uh, the whole time since we've owned it. We originally purchased it about two and a half months ago. And he did a number of uh, repairs that needed to be done while uh, he was waiting for us to arrive in April. Uh, when we purchased the boat, uh, the survey came out with a number of things wrong, as should be on an older boat. What we did was we negotiated the price down the, to compensate for the prices of uh, the repairs. and. Um, once we had that in hand, we hired Tim to do a lot of the repairs while we were still up in Pennsylvania. So we had most of them done before we arrived, except for, except for a couple of things that sprung up at the last second. So not only is Tim good for uh, taking care of the repairs, but he has just been priceless when it comes to teaching us uh, the way the boat works, how to use the systems on the boat, how to, how to dock the boat, just everything in general. He's been a, he's been a godsend. Um, so anyway, shout out to Tim. Thanks, man. I don't think we could be doing it without you. We should have like a gold membership for Uber because we're using them two, three times a day. Uh, just to go out, get supplies, provisions, parts, go to a restaurant. Uh, we were fortunate though, my sister, my mother, and my sister's boyfriend flew, or I drove down from uh, Spring Hill and they spent a day with us. And we took the opportunity to use their car to pick up everything heavy we could think of. <laughs> so we got gallons of water and iced tea and some of the heavier supplies that we need, went sh food shopping, and so that was a godsend. But uh, I'll tell you what, I don't know what we'd be doing without Uber either. <laughs> so I think we're gonna buy some bicycles somewhere along this trip so we can bicycle some places, but until then, it's Uber. So, it, you know, in addition to uh, my my mother and my sister and Ron taking us out to all the stores and using their car, they're also very helpful in helping us get the boat together. Uh, Ron in particular helped me figure out some of the uh, systems that we couldn't get on, uh, figuring out how to get the uh, the Wi-Fi working on the boat and also the monitors. Where there's uh, there's videotape or video cameras all around the boat, and we couldn't figure out how to get that running at first, but we got that going as well. So. Big thanks to, uh, to family from uh, Florida for coming out and lending us a hand. Well, we successfully, <laughs> we successfully did it, and we're running. Yeah. So far, so good. We made it a couple hundred yards without sinking. Yeah, yeah. Got the boat off. A lot of help from Fernando. Thank you, Fernando. Yeah, everything's looking good. Um, Oil pressure gauge has got to be nervous because it seems to be malfunctioning. And check the oil, there's plenty of oil, engine sounds good, the water temperature is all good, so I think it's the gauge is just not right. But I guess we'll find out. Oh shit. Other than that, <laughs> yeah. everything seems okay. Now we're heading out to the ocean. 
There's some beautiful houses around here. Coming out to get out of here before we hit the uh, ocean. 